So in the central west of New South Wales, we're up here actually looking for slugs in pastures. And it's really difficult for farmers to know when slugs are in pastures. One of the tips is, is to go out actually the spring before, particularly wet winters and early springs, and do some monitoring. So put a refuge down, such as a 20 litre drum, half full of water, tip some water out, and then where the condensate, go out and look in the morning so they, they can actually see slugs. Last year when I was up in New South Wales, I actually noticed in pastures, there was a lot of clovers missing. So we're basically wanting to know the soft leaf plants that are eaten by slugs in pastures. The literature says from New Zealand that up to 40% of your clovers can be eaten by slugs. Understanding the impacts of slugs and then how do you deal with them is quite difficult in an established pasture because a lot of the baits you've got have actually got grazing withholding periods. So you need to be looking at cultural controls. And one of the simplest things is actually high stocking rates in the springtime to remove habitat, which of course is very difficult in wet springs to do. Once you understand that you have got slugs in your pasture system and it's doing damage and you're looking to re-establish clovers the following season into those areas that have been damaged, not only by slugs, but other pests as well, or just improving the species. When you go to sow them down, the first thing you need to do is try and look at, say, a summer fallow, but even a spring fallow to retain some moisture, early sowing, but also incorporating some lime and some cultural controls, a bit of tillage to smooth the paddock out. So then when you go to sow, you've got an environment that's less favourable for the slugs to be active on the soil surface. Once you've done those cultural practices to try and reduce the slug activity, when you're applying bait directly after sowing to protect all those clover seeds, but also your ryegrass seeds from the slugs, you really need to get the timing of baiting right. There are a lot of bait products on the market, but it is crucial that you get the bait on to protect the seed and the seedlings. A cultural practice, of course, is rolling directly after sowing, but then actually applying that bait so it's there to get any surface active slugs so they don't feed on your pastures. So I think putting it all together, we need an integrated approach. So farmers, to get successful control of slugs, need to integrate the cultural, but also the beneficial. So we haven't spoken about carabid beetles and nematodes and things like that, but using them to keep the populations low and then using baits as a crop protectant. When we're actually trying to control slugs in pastures and we're using bait as our chemical tool to protect our seeds and seedlings, it's really important that we get the bait on at the right time, but also it's spread evenly. And to do that, it's absolutely critical that we calibrate our spreaders. We don't just grab the mouse bait spreader out the back of the shed. We actually need to calibrate and make sure that the baits are evenly applied and that will give us the best return on investment.